Hello and welcome to Kind of Man TV. My name is Conor McLeod, and in this episode, I get the chance to speak with the chair of the Scottish Hemp Association, Kyle Esplan. In this episode, we discuss what the Scottish Hemp Association is, the current state of the hemp and CBD industry, current problems facing the hemp and CBD industry, including Novel Foods Act, the concentration of CBD issue, and the less than 1% THC issue. We also discuss CBD isolate, the importance of whole plant extract, standardised modes of testing, and why consumer demand shows the direction the industry needs to take. Make sure to like and subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any Kind of Man TV content. And please support the channel by joining us on Patreon, where you can help build a stronger cannabis media platform. Now then, let's talk cannabis. Right, well, uh, thank you very much for being on the channel, Kyle. Great to be here, Connor. Good to join you. Uh, could you just get started with essentially giving a breakdown of what the Scottish Hemp Association is and what stage of development you're currently at? So Scottish Hemp Association, we've been meeting since um, about last summer, loosely from, sorry, 2019 in the summertime, um, various companies in Scotland. It was uh, several founding companies got together, myself from Holistic Highland Hemp, there's uh, Dave from Canadonia, Scott from Flora Fusion, Eddie from Balanced Vitality, and uh, Alex from Holistic Hemp Scotland. And we were meeting from last year with other, other interested companies in Scotland, food producers, manufacturers, farmers, who are interested in the future of hemp. And we came together just to strengthen the industry, raise awareness of what we were doing and just you know, make, make connections all together of what we were trying to work here in the country. But things uh, became a bit more serious as the, uh, the novel foods pressing issue um, has, has been coming closer. So in the summer of 2020, um, after Eddie Middleton had set up the association, I took over as a chair um, in the summertime and opened communications with Food Standards Scotland about the novel foods issue that was coming. So the 31st of March deadline 2021 only applies to England and Wales as set by the Food Standards Authority. Um, Food Standards Scotland hadn't announced a deadline and we were trying to make a case to get something better for the country really in the proposed situation because there's too many inconsistencies in the plans of how it's going to handle hemp products and we don't feel it's uh, we don't feel it's fair so we open communications for food standards scotland and this is a uh, this is what's really brought us all together and energized the movement at the moment the issues when it comes to novel foods in particular then kyle could you just give a breakdown for anyone that's unaware of what the novel foods act is and uh, what the issues are so the the Novel Foods Act is basically that if there wasn't a history of consumption of that product prior to 1997 in Europe, then it needs novel foods licensing and application, um, animal testing to prove it's then safe. The European Industrial Hemp Association made a very good presentation at the European level as to why novel foods should not apply to whole plant hemp extracts containing CBD. Unfortunately, this was not accepted despite all the evidence and it's then other member states are generally going to follow suit. We believe that the member state should be able to interpret and uh, implement as correct for, for their country. Uh, we're not in Europe anymore, so we've made the case to Food Standards Scotland that we didn't believe that the novel foods process should apply to whole plant hemp extracts containing CBD. We agree it definitely should apply to isolated CBD and synthetic CBD, but we don't think it's fair on whole plant hemp extracts. Yeah, is that having that? Is this what the issue is then? Essentially, the thirty first of March for small time CBD producers or distributors, they have to essentially fork out hundreds of thousands of pounds to clarify their product as of the ratio that's proposed. Yeah, well, the main thing they're asking is to prove that the consumption of CBD is safe, and there's uh, various things how this is this has come up. To get one product through the process is probably about a quarter of a million pounds, maybe 300,000 pounds to get one product through the process. Now, other ingredients that have gone through the novel foods process, for example, stevia, the sweetener, once it had been tested and proven safe once, it could be added to any recipe, any formula and used after that. With CBD, it's going to be a tighter regulation where every single product formulation has to go through trials and animal testing to be proven safe. So if you take a 99% pure CBD isolate and put it in MCT oil, three months of testing on a rat in a laboratory, get your results. If you then want to put the same isolate into a hemp seed oil or an avocado oil, 
it needs another three months of animal testing to be proven safe, just in case there's any other interaction with the, the different carrier oil. So it's not, I mean, fair enough for isolate or synthetic CBD, there's no history of consumption of that. Um, but we feel it's been unfair the way they've split the line of whole plant extracts and we've we proposed the case to try and get um, try and get something better sorted. Right. Unfortunately, we're kind of breaking up a bit, Kyle, but it's kind of clearing itself up now. Um, one of the issues you just touched on there a second ago was the, the safety method of CBD ingestion. So, I mean, for anybody that's just new to CBD, they might be fearful that yeah, an overdose or a toxic response towards it. Is there a cap on uh, safely ingested levels of CBD? Well, CBD has been tested in humans about 600 milligram a day for two years without any serious adverse effects. It's also been used in humans at 1500 milligram a day without any problems stopping as well. Um, the issue of what's been raised is data that's come up from GW Pharmaceuticals clinical trials using Epidiol Epidiolex, which is a purified CBD. Again, it's not hemp plant extract, it's a purified CBD compound um, from cannabis. Um, so the, the results that came up, they said there was some concerns in the liver function test, and that's why food standards have now used this data to say all the products have to be put through these trials. But I would also bring up that uh, their previous product, Sativex, which is a one-to-one -one ratio of CBD, THC, and has more whole plant extract in it than Epidiolex, didn't have those results um, turn up. That's not been reported. Um, and also, I mean, to get an opinion, we could see the, the senior med medical advisor for GW Pharmaceuticals, Dr. Ethan Russo, who oversaw the trials of Epidiolics where this data has came, came from. He was asked on the 14th of December what he thought about the concerns of liver toxicity with CBD. And his reply was, and I quote, I think that's a blind alley to be truthful. Obviously a lower dose would be better, but the liver issues are mainly related to elevations of liver function tests. And this is generally in children who are on polypharmacy with a number of drugs, particularly Valproic acid, which is well known for being a bad actor in terms of liver function test elevation. So my strong suspicion is that it's related to polypharmacy, multiple drugs, rather than the specific effect of CBD. So that's the guy who oversaw the trials, saying that he doesn't see the issue with that. Now, if there is safety concerns about consuming CBD, it's present in hemp seed oil. And you know that doesn't get mentioned. We don't have to write a maximum limit on the hemp seed oil about how much can, can be consumed. Um, and there's a study that I'll share with you here, you can put up um, the, a study of 13 different hemp seed oils from Italy from 2018. Um, and one of them has close to 2000 milligram of CBD and a liter of hemp seed oil. And that's for sale with no mention of the CBD if that's what the actual concern is, you know? so. That's that's really interesting there, Kyle, because a lot of the time that will go absent. I mean, hemp seed oil has been on the shelf for, I mean, God knows how long, you know, and that's, as you've mentioned, it's had CBD the entire time. So what's been the issue? Why has this just then came to the forefront? Well, um, what they're saying is the extraction method that these products use because it's a CO2 extraction, which is a standard food grade extraction process. It gets used in many things in the food industry. It's quite normal. But because we don't have evidence that CO2 extraction specifically was used prior to 1997, they're saying the extraction method makes it a, a novel food. But not only that, they say the, the selective nature for the CBD concentration is what makes it a novel food. And this is a problem in the terminology and definition of what we're talking about as well, because 99% purified CBD is clearly selective for CBD. You know, we put the case forward that let's say we have a 15% hemp paste. We don't believe that's selective for CBD. There's probably more wax and omega-3 fat than there is CBD in that. So how can you say that's selective? Um, and then they claim that it is, but they won't give it. So our next question, which we're waiting to hear an answer on is, so what exactly are the parameters of what you call selective for CBD? Some people would say, well, anything that was outside the concentration of what was prior. Well, what are those parameters? You know, there must be a ratio of CBD to other compounds, total content of CBD. In our opinion, you can get a 15% CBD plant. So we don't see why there should be a problem on the concentration of that. Now that, that's one issue. Um, then we have the issue of the, the trace controlled 
substance part, which turns up in all hemp food products and has also gone, it seems, unnoticed in hemp seed oil and other things, and is still going unnoticed as we talk about the CBD industry and all the negative press that the CBD industry has had for really unjust reasons. Um, in 2019, when the ACI did a study of 30, 30 CBD oils that were for sale on the UK market, and they found that the, the average THC content across the, the 30 oils was 0.04% or four milligram THC in a 10 mil bottle, yeah. which then got the newspaper headlines that uh, the average content of CBD oil was four times the illegal levels in the UK. Now that sounds like a scary headline to consumers, but to give it some context of what that actually means and what the headline should have said was, CBD products in the UK were found to contain on average less THC than Germany permits in a liter of hemp seed oil, and they've got the strictest food regulation in Europe. It really changes the, 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 the pitch of it, you know? So there's, there's the novel foods extraction issue, there's the concentration of CBD, and then there's the, the controlled substance part, which is separate from novel foods. And for some reason, hemp seed oil is not getting brought into the discussion and we are bringing it into the discussion because it's, um, we feel it's very unfair, both the, the way the novel foods and the, let's say the, the press or what they're trying to do about the controlled substance part. And this is all a push to have isolated CBD only sort of products on the market. We have companies who are investing, pushing this, who have synthetically produced CBD, which at the moment is not a lot, it's not cheaper than plant-based, but in the future, synthetic CBD will be a lot cheaper than plant-based is um, able to produce. And our big objection as well to the novel foods changes to the hemp market, you know, th this hemp industry wasn't, wasn't built up by a regulation or anyone telling consumers they should be taking this or it was good for them as, you know, this was built from the grassroots up and it was yeah. like 11 to 13% of the population last year tried a, tried a, a CBD product. So, um, you know, that's, that's the background as to, as to where this has came from. And we now have companies who are pushing synthetic CBD who are loving the idea of the novel foods regulation because what the consumers have not been told is when novel foods regulation comes into play, synthetically produced CBD can be put in a product with no labeling requirement to state the product contains synthetically produced CBD. And everyone's gonna think it's from plant-based or hemp. There's no regulatory requirement to state the difference. We mentioned our objection to that to food standards. I don't think they even blink, you know, that's to them, it's exactly the same compound. And we're like, right, yeah, isolate and synthetic, go for it with your novel foods, but whole plant, it's uh, not fair. And especially when you can't even tell us the cutoff, you know, you're saying that it's got too much CBD for the, the selective concentration. Well, if you know what the threshold is, where is it? Where can, what's under the threshold? So we yeah. went to hear an answer on, the, on that also. It's an extremely frustrating situation, Kyle. Um, I mean, the multitude of factors immediately is just relatively dizzying. You know why the issue is the controlled substance thing that you touched on a minute ago there, the less than 1% THC factor. And then obviously the fact that isolate seems to be the predominant go-to um, product now, even though that whole plant extract essentially started the market in the first place in 2014. Um, yeah. so, so, I mean, this is a, the, the isolated, when you just mentioned that there as well, the synthetic basis of including synthetic CBD in a product, um, consumers would be assuming it was plant-based because I think there's kind of yeah. CBD and cannabinoids in particular, they kind of go hand in hand with a, with a natural product. I think that's just the assumption that most people will have. Exactly. Had the market started with CBD isolate and synthetic, it would not be as popular as it is now. Do you think that's, that's, just, do you, do you think that's largely to do with the, the entourage effect, which goes again unnoticed with the whole plant extracts? Oh yeah, absolutely. And there might be a couple of people out there who are going to say there was a paper recently which the entourage effect has still not been proven. But again, it comes down to the terminology and definition of what we're talking about is entourage effect. People like myself would take entourage effect as meaning the overall, you know, beneficial or therapeutic effect. There was a study shown recently that terpenes that don't influence the effect of cannabinoids on the receptor. Okay, that doesn't disprove the overall entourage effect, it just says terpenes don't change the effect at the receptor level, which is not what anyone claimed when saying entourage, but it's very, yeah. it's, I mean, it's very clear, that, um, 
all the all our companies who started this association sell whole plant products. We all came to it really from our own background of whole plant products for various health reasons. And we all agree that had it started as isolated, purified CBD only, it wouldn't have been so appealing, wouldn't have got the same benefits, and it wouldn't be as popular an in industry as it is now. So without the, the essential emergence of uh, the isolated extraction process, we wouldn't be dealing with this situation. Do you think that's what's brought the alarm bells ringing to these uh, standard yeah, well, agencies? When CBD isolate turned up on the market in 2016, people were only using it for smoking and vaping and adding terpenes and putting it into pens because whole plant was a lot better for consumption. And then some big companies got behind the idea that, you know, because there was well, they think there's no trace THC, there always is. It might only be a few parts per million or maybe parts per billion, but if it came from a plant, there is always some trace THC, unless it's synthetically produced, that's the only purified. So, I mean, some people got behind the idea that, you know, regulation would be easier, they could sell it to more places, so they would push this through and, you know, that's kind of where it's came up from. So just to come back to the, the trace controlled substance part as well for the the hemp seed oil, we, we've made the case to food standards as well. If they really wanted to look into it, some hemp food products with traditional extraction methods could also be considered novel by their own definition if they really wanted to pull up the fine details about it. So, for example, there was a study from February 2019 on the hemp seed oil, and it found the presence of 32 different cannabinoids, with 22 of the 32 being described as statistically significant. Um, that covers, covers all the famous ones of CBD, THC, but also ones that are a bit more off the track, CBEA, CBMA, CBTA, CBT, 6, 7 epoxy CG, THCA, C1, CBD, C4, THCV. These were all found in, uh, in hemp seed oil. And so the, also the study went on to say that for the first time, a number of cannabinoids, which to the best of our knowledge have never been reported, have now been identified in hemp seed oil. So what it's saying is there's new cannabinoids have been discovered in hemp seed oil in 2019. Well, you could say that, well, there was no evidence that cannabinoid was being consumed prior to 97. And because different varieties have different cannabinoids, and a lot of the varieties were created after 97, you couldn't say you definitely have evidence that compound was being consumed prior so technically that should be a novel food by your own your own definition um, and the other thing about the like the controlled substance part there's a study from uh italy this this one was from uh, 2018 we can put that one up as well there and highlight that um and this study was of 13 different hemp seed oils for sale in the european market and it found that 12 of the 13 hemp seed oils would contain more than one milligram controlled substance per product if sold in one liter bottles. Um, if, the one, if the one milligram was to be considered a total of all the controlled substances and not one milligram of each one, 11 of the 13 would be over the legal level if sold in only 250 mil bottles. Now, that's a big problem because, you know, this has been on the market for some time. And now they're complaining about CBD oil and it's been in hemp seed oil for all this time. When people buy a hemp seed oil that's whole, uh, when people buy a CBD oil that's full spectrum, they know there's trace cannabinoids in there. When they're buying a bottle of hemp seed oil, they don't know there's trace cannabinoids <laughs> in there. So, um, yeah. It's a extremely confusing situation for anybody involved and people that are unaware of this will be, you know, nauseated by the information that's been presented. Yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, it just, it's, it just doesn't make sense, you know. Um, so re what it comes back to then is the, where does this one milligram rule come from? Everyone in the industry talks about the one milligram rule, and very few people have actually read the full details of what's involved in the one milligram. So I think we should bring those up as well, and we can put them up and look through them. So. Let's read through that. So this is from the Misuse of Drugs Act in 2001 as to what's an exempt product. Um, there are three limbs of the definition which have to be met for the product to be considered exempt. And this applies to all products in the finished form and package. Everyone conveniently misses out uh, the first limb A, which states, 
The preparation or other product is not designed for the administration of the controlled drug to a human being or animal. So we've got hemp seed oil, which contains a few milligram of THC or CBN in a litre or even a half litre bottle. Hemp seed oil is clearly designed for human consumption. The trace cannabinoids have been noted to be part of the beneficial effect of consuming hemp seed oil. So it'd be quite a stretch to say the product was designed for consumption, but not designed for the consumption of, the, of this one specific trace compound, which is also present. That would be a bit of a stretch. So then the, uh, the second limb is that the controlled drug or com component is packaged in a way that it can't be removed easily to yield a, a risk to health. That's easily met. And then we have the third one, which is everyone's favorite that they bring up about that uh, the product or component can't have more than one milligram of the controlled drug. Reading those, for those three to be met, you could say the interpretation is actually it should have less than one milligram of controlled substance and also not be for consumption, not for human administration. So, you know, hemp seed oil, hemp foods, you know, they've been on the market for over 20 years. Um, you know, what's, uh, why is it all of a sudden just come up, up now? The problem about CBD oil. Um, yeah. So exactly, so, I mean, so do you think that the, the issue is just, that seems to be the, the, the protagonist in this situation, the, at least antagonist is isolate. So if you were to just say, uh, if the approach was to be all foods which are isolate based are novel, anything above and beyond that are categorized elsewhere, that would resolve the issue. Yeah, we've made the case to Food Standards Scotland that what we propose is that anything that's 95% purity CBD and above should definitely be considered novel foods and put through the process, we agree. 95% purity is where, like in the pharmaceutical terms, it becomes a pure compound. You know, they're saying the mm. problem is CBD. And we're like, well, it's not just CBD, it's hemp extract, which contains CBD. It's like saying that vitamin C is the same as orange juice. It's not. The orange juice contains vitamin C, but it's not the same as vitamin C. So, mm. you know, we don't have the definition of exactly what they're talking about. They just want to put all these products in the category. And we've made the case that we would like to go forward with the, what we call a soft touch, keep in, keep in touch uh, policy of um, companies to have these whole plant extracts. They can still be in line with all of their food regulation. They can be less than one milligram, the controlled substance, everything else can be in line. But if you're gonna draw the line at these novel foods, that the problem is these paste products and whole plant extracts, it's not actually possible to get it through the process because there's too many variables and even if you get it through once, the next batch is all going to need tested again. And if there's a slight difference in the wax content or a terpene slightly different, you know, and that's just not, it just does, doesn't uh, doesn't justify that. One so of the we, issues. We made the case, yeah, we, we made the case that we um, we should be able to keep these products in the market as food products because if we don't have that sorted, it's not that everyone's just going to move to sell and isolates as food. Now, Food Standard Scotland seem to think that as everything moves to novel foods, all the consumers would just move across to isolated CBD products if that's what's available and was the sold as legal regulated version. But they don't understand the consumers that uh, our companies don't sell isolated CBD products. And um, that's not what, not what the consumers are interested in. And we've heard from many consumers that if whole plant extracts were not available on the food system, they will get them one way or another, and they're not going over to CBD isolate products because they found they weren't so beneficial. So yeah. what's going to happen, not as a, any top-down policy, but what happened in Europe, you can just look at an example, you know, there's some very predictable consequences. There's other unpredictable ones which will play out in time. And that's why we should make things as smooth as best possible for everyone involved. And it's sensible for the consumer because what happened in Europe is that when they enforced the novel foods regulations on these products and consumers wanted whole plant extracts, when trading standards came and took them off the shelves, they were back on the shelves 48 hours labeled as cosmetics. Same formula, same whole plant extract labeled as a cosmetic. Now, the product is not even in the food system if food standards has some complaint about maybe a heavy metal present or some other issue or wasn't packaged in, a, in the proper environment. You know, and if there's this whole category of consumer out there that does not want CBD isolate and they've made it clear that and if they're not available here as cosmetics, they'll look at ways to buy them in from abroad or worse comes to worse, they'll be back on the street looking for things. You know, that's not that's just not 
not sensible. So we made the case that uh, this is definitely worth discussion and especially because of the hemp food products. And the other angle why this is so important is we're not just CBD companies, we're a hemp association. And outside of our CBD business, we've been working in collaboration with the Rowett Institute, Aberdeen University, which is government funded food research. And the Scottish government has done four years research into hemp food as an alternative protein source for the future. Um, there's been human trials done comparing a, a hemp protein based lunch compared to a, a meat protein uh, based lunch and analyzing all different uh, levels and readings from there. They've analyzed all the macronutrients, everything that's in hemp, but uh, don't, don't seem to have looked at the controlled substance part. So, um, you know, the farmers, it, so what's developed from there is that uh, we now have around 10 farmers in Angus and Aberdeenshire who are on board for growing hemp food crops this Excellent. year. And this is also why it's so important for us to get this sorted out because the government's invested in this research. They've got their license, they've got their plans, they're going to grow. And now there's all this stuff coming up about, uh, you know, trace THC down to this amount and quantifying the total of all different cannabinoids to be under one milligram. And, you know, we need to know are hemp foods exempt from that or are farmers going to get a license, do all this process and then be told in, you know, six months that, uh, oh, well, that contains controlled substances now that uh, has been okay for the last 20 years. But for people to invest and for the, the market to move forward, to people get on board with this, it's been, you know, it's been hard enough. So we need, we need this clarified. So after Food Standards Scotland bringing up the issue about one milligram THC um, threshold in CBD products, and that there is some in the market which have been more than that and should be in line and that can easily be sorted. Um, when we ask them about how is this going to work with hemp foods, all of a sudden they say it's not their remit. We've got to talk to Police Scotland or the Home Office. So that's what we're uh, going to have to do. We're going to talk to Police Scotland. It's their territory, it's their remit. So we demand an answer what's the law here and how is this going to be enforced and are hemp foods coming under this one milligram because if they are that's going to be a big problem and if they're not then that means there's no defined THC limit for hemp foods so they can't have it both ways and we need clarity. It's almost humorous you showing up to the police station with like a bottle of hemp seed oil you know ready to cook up some eggs or something. <laughs> yeah and I know, the, the other thing that's going to go, sorry. No, yeah, no, the other thing I was going to mention, Kyle, was that uh, when you're talking about the, the accuracy of uh, THC percentage in the products, which has been crucial, it pops into my head there. I think it was on one of the articles that's online. I think it was uh, across the sign-ups. They actually uh, had shown that uh, even official products such as Sativex and, and Bedica come out regularly at uh, different uh, percentage ratios, you know. But yeah, that was the thing. It just came up in that article the other day that uh, after all the hassle the CBD industry has had when it's like 10% off with their analysis or something, I mean, products should be what it says on the label. And if it's not, there's trading standards, there's regulations and food standards to sort that. But after all the hassle the industry's had, you know, there's products on the market that are labeled as 22% THC flour. And then there's official batch analysis showing it might be 17.6, it might be 24.8. There's another flower that's prescribed on the market says 20% THC and 4% CBD. The actual batch analysis was 21.3% THC, less than 0.1 CBD. And it says 4% on the pack. So yeah. and the packet says there's a five to there's a five to one um, five to one ratio of THC CBD, but it's actually a 213 to one yeah. THC to CBD ratio. So I don't know what's going on there, but um I don't know why the CBD industry selling food products has had hassle when that's what's turned up in the uh, medical supply. I mean, the other thing we're going to start hearing in the talk and it's going to come up, and again, synthetic CBD producers are going to be a jumping on this one to try and amp it up, but we'll put forward what it actually says before the narrative gets written in a different way, that um, the, the government chemist uh, guidance, the official one has came out here from the, the government about... Um, the issue of quantifying the one milligram of controlled substance in the product. Um, and they've straight away highlighted that there's difficulties in interpretation and analysis. So I mean, that's a starting point. We have no clarity on interpretation. So for us here in Scotland, that's for Police Scotland to give us an answer on. Once they explain the framework, then everyone can know how they can operate and work. We can't just look at interpretations and maybe 
And this yeah. interpretation saying that the one milligram does it mean one milligram of each controlled substance or a one milligram of the total controlled drugs? Well, I would think it, it would be of each because it states no more than one milligram of a controlled drug. It doesn't say S drugs would be, you know, plural. Yeah. So yeah. they then put the case forward here as an interpretation on the worst case scenario, if the one milligram was the total of all the controlled substances, which after this has come out, the synthetic CBD producers and some isolates are going to be pushing this forward as what's happening. But again, this is a uh, never been tested and is only opinion. So there, if this was worst come to worst, this would be looking at no more than one milligram total in a product made up of a combination of trans delta nine C5, trans delta nine THC C5, sorry, trans delta nine THC C5, cis delta nine THC C5, delta nine THC C4, delta nine THC C3, delta nine THC C1, delta eight THC, cannabinol C1, cannabinol C2, cannabinol C3, cannabinol C4, cannabinol C5, cannabinol methyl ether C5. No more than one milligram total of all those put together is the worst case scenario. It's like, well, that would be all hemp food products are in trouble if that's actually the interpretation. So we don't believe that can be the interpretation because we don't believe there's any appetite to go and remove hemp food products from the shelves. So if it doesn't apply to hemp food products, shouldn't apply to CBD products. And anyone who says hemp seed oil is exempt from novel foods has to remember that novel foods exemption is no exemption from controlled substance regulation. So it doesn't solve the problem and we need clarity. Yeah, I would certainly I would just resolve the issue completely if they just applied that approach to uh, hemp food products because then CBD whole extract can also be pushed through and we could just essentially move forward to where we're at. And especially, you know, because it's not, they're trying to say that, oh, well, this just applies to CBD. There's no definition this applies to only CBD. It clearly applies to all hemp foods. Yeah. I don't see any, you know, any mention elsewhere by that exempt. And, you know, it was hard enough to get new farmers on board for this plan and to get started for the country. And I mean, it's part of our green future. We don't have decortication facility close by here in Scotland. Um, so we can't do the tall fibrous crops for the, get the industrial textile um, you know, maximize the use of that. So the first year is going to be the short height, short growing season food crop, um, seed oil, protein powder. Um, and we have all these, all these unanswered questions, people just passing the buck. We have uh, other things in the industry trying to write narratives, which, you know, nothing's changed. There's narratives getting written of how people would like to shape things. And the consumer on the ground, you know, is not being told that novel foods mean synthetic CBD without any indication of that. You know, not everyone's cool at animal testing, you know, 90 days of testing on an animal to prove your CBD safe after you've been taking it for the last three or four years. Is that gonna change your, uh, your opinion? Uh, what the 90 day on the lab rat had to say about that? You know, mm -hmm. Ethan Russo who oversaw the trials is saying it's not really relevant. You know, it's only when you're taking lots of drugs at the same time and really it's the other drugs is the problem is what he's saying. So, so it's just not fair, it's being pushed forward. Sorry, Kyle, what do you see in the next uh, foreseeable future? I know you're meeting with the Food Standards Scotland on Monday. Mm -hmm. So we are meeting with them on Monday and um, I believe they have their presentation about the novel foods process and how they see things. And that's all clear and well for CBD isolate and CBD synthetic and that. But we have to sort out these definitions and parameters uh, of what we're talking about outside of that and all hemp food products. Um, the 31st of March deadline does not apply to Scotland, that's only for England and Wales, because we haven't had, let's say, a year and a half notice that that was a deadline. We were expecting a, a longer deadline if there is any change to be made. You know, we don't, we don't believe there should be this change. It's going to cause problems down the line um, in unexpected ways. They weren't aware of all these details about hemp foods. It's us that brought them up, and I don't think they know how to deal with it. But <laughs> it's them who brought it up, so it's their remit. <laughs> yeah, this is ridiculous. This is what's going on. The people that are actually in positions of authority and the kind of influence are being informed about the direction that should that should that is available. Essentially, they don't even know where they're looking. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's really disappointing. And on a 
But on a human level, again, at Food Standard Scotland, they, they get it. I mean, they really get the case because there's no good argument against it and they can't answer all the questions yet. We're still waiting on. So um, on a human level, I think they would like to say, you know, we agree with you, uh, go ahead. But I think because uh, England and Wales has got such a narrative laid out what's going to happen that um, don't want Scotland to be uh, portrayed as any Wild West or something continuing with hemp up here that's not what's right. going on in England. And, and of course, all the investor companies with their synthetic CBD would like to know there's a uniform approach across the United Kingdom to, you know, yeah. to so uh, give their do? investors yeah. confidence to spend more money on CBD synthetic. Yeah. What would you do? To, what would you suggest then, Kyle, for to... It would be, a, it'd be a, a tragedy to lose whole plant extract in the near future. So what would you, what would you suggest that we could do to, if possible, to influence well, this? Well, I think the, the hemp foods argument is the, is the whole thing. It doesn't solve the problem of the novel foods angle, but it does bring in the, the controlled substance trace amounts as to why CBD isolate should not be the only way. Novel foods is a, is a separate thing, but I mean, whole plants are going to remain on the market and that's been made very clear to, to the food standard Scotland because no company is breaking the law if they turn a whole plant extract into a cosmetic product and it's got less than one milligram controlled substance, it mm. remains for sale. We know that for a long time, people have been buying extracts and used them for a variety of uses anyway. And consumers have made it clear that they want these extracts available one way or another. So it would, when food standards maybe weren't aware of that in advance, but because we have made them aware, you know, they should look at all this evidence and see that the compromise we're proposing is not a, it's not a stretch. I mean, it's not a stretch to public health and safety or anything like that. They've got all the data there we've presented as to how we can justify the case. Yeah. And it's already shown safety wise CBD is far more safe than even that of caffeine sugar sugar is actually regarded as a as a controlled substance by the the i think it's the eu or the european union's proposal of what a controlled substance is you know it's addictive it's poisonous you know that's a controlled right. substance uh, if yeah. I can, unless i'm wrong i'll have to check that and fire it up just to make sure <laughs> um so i mean do you think there's a, is there a time frame in the near future kyle then do you think what's going to happen well we'll see at our next meeting what the, the time frame is we're going ahead um and we just, we're also concerned that uh, something gets rushed through and bulldozed through without considering all these parameters we brought up about hemp foods to then have some unexpected trouble down the line that they didn't forecast when they got involved in this, you know. So there's that. And um, the other thing on the coming up on the, the horizon is we have a seat at the table with the specialist interest group with the British Standards Institute for um, writing the UK's ISO cannabis standardization policy. So um that's it's coming up soon as well. And that's excellent. That will yeah, that will help to that doesn't solve everything downstream of there, but it will clarify some of the the uh, upstream processes for the future and expanding the market and what's going to be coming, you know. Just what's excellent about this, Kyle, as well, is how active you are and how active the Scottish Hemp Association is. Because very often in the channel, it comes across as if Scotland's lying dormant, there's not anything going on. But in all actuality, there's a lot of busy people behind the scenes. Yeah, well, we've not been on, on sort of online until, well, like interviews like this, we're sort of uh, getting going online, explaining what we've been doing. We've been just, because we've really felt pressed about the, the time scale to try and do this through the official channels to make them aware of all these issues and and to contact the other associations down south and to get them on board and have them do the right thing look at the data you know of us some of the other associations and it's like you know hemp seed oil you know like, <laughs> no no come on we have to talk about this and if they say you know oh is this opening a can of worms like well what are you supposed to do ignore it and then have trouble in six months and you know we're not how could we be heading towards a future where hemp seed oil has to be removed from the shelves because of now we've looked at its controlled substance content, you know? Yeah. That doesn't resonate with anyone as what's happening in the future. And what this shows as well is how painfully, um, how much of a painfully, how new the industry is. You know, this industry is so new that there's all these complex issues are largely based on language um, and also methods of analysis. It's just, this is, they will iron myself over time, but I think, look, people like yourselves doing that so that the ironing doesn't go in a direction where it is most negatively affected to the consumer. Sure. Yeah. And that's what the, the case we've been trying to make. Um, it would, uh, yeah, I mean, like with isolated CBD, if you look up any of the, any of the studies about these things, you know, they're generally shown to be sort of 
you know, less effective, you need higher doses. And if you take higher doses, there's more side effects show up that don't show up with the whole plant extracts generally, you know? So it's... I suppose we could all just keep our fingers crossed that in the near future, this all works in our favor. Keep chanting, keep chanting, Kyle, you could do this, man. <laughs> Essentially, just before we go, Kyle, anybody that's got a CBD shop in Scotland, then they're, they can bri uh, breathe a uh, breath of relief kind of thing just because of the fact it's not going to affect Scotland. And it's just, I think the reason why I'm slightly confused on that is that I think the, the ACI had an article that was saying that Scotland was going to remove them from their shelves until those official processes or something. Well, the clarification was just that from the 1st of January, Food Standard Scotland takes over the novel food process from Europe. And by definition, just now, CBD products are supposed to apply for novel foods. Now they're uh, out, with the, out from Europe and into that. But we have been talking with Food Standards Scotland and we have, you know, we have communication and we've negotiated that there's no immediate clampdown coming on products and no, you know, short notice, these have to be changed or removed or having erratic enforcement across the country with different trading standards, that would be problematic as well. So yeah. that's been communicated from the, the top down across the board that companies want to work, we want to find a solution, we want to do everything right and work with authorities but if they don't answer all the questions and give us all the parameters of how to work if it's cbd isolate synthetic great it's all clear but we're a hemp industry not just cbd and we need answers so yeah. that's what we're working on trying to raise awareness and get the message out about that because um, a lot of people don't seem to have been sold a different narrative about what's coming i would say well i think this will certainly give a, a broader perspective on what's going on kyle this has been brilliant thanks very much for your time kyle this has been absolutely extremely informative Thanks, Connor. It's great talking with you. Really good to join you here. Thanks to Kyle for giving me his time, and thanks to you for sticking around until the end of the video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed the content. I'll see you next time.